Okay, welcome to another episode of The Idiot's Guide to Rebuilding Suzuki GT750s. This In this episode, we'll be rebuilding the carburettors. This will be two parts. The first part will be stripping it down, making sure everything's okay. The second part will be rebuilding it once we've had all the hardware uh, re-zinked and uh, the carbs vapor blasted. So quick check now to make sure firstly that the bellows or the diaphragm is working. All these should go up and down. I don't know if you can hear that air coming out. But to check that there aren't any perforations in the diaphragm, put your thumb over the vent. Just check you can see it. Put it over and then press the vent up. If there's no resistance in that one, so I'll have to have a look. Try the next one. Right, there's resistance there, you can see. And there's a resistance there as well. So either somebody's had this apart and they've trapped the edge of the diaphragm so it's leaking or the diaphragm is knackered but we'll see um right so what i tend to do is the first job i do is to just slacken all the fuel bowl nuts off because the hell securely at the moment so just give them a crack So we know we can get those out without, without any issues. I like to strip the carbs into three separate carbs and then we can tackle each one separately rather than it being a big block and very cumbersome. The other thing to do before we start stripping the carbs, just slacken these screws that hold the butterflies. It's easy to do it here. You've got something big to get hold of. You're not taking them out, you're just loosening them. Again, we're using JAS screwdrivers. And you know the right, because when you put them in, it should grab it like that. You can see the difference with this one. Let me just check, you can see, yeah. If I hold, if I put that in the cross, it drops out. This one doesn't, that's the correct one. Easy way to check. And you don't nail your screws up. So press down and give them a quick crack. Again, you're not taking them out. You're just loosening them. But these are little sods for stripping. So as with everything I do, this is the easy way. Okay, they're all loose. The next thing to do is withdraw the choke rod. Very simple. Just unscrew them. The choke lifter, should I say. Not all the way out, just enough so it moves. And then withdraw, you'll have to hold the lifters. And then they just pull off. These are all going in these boxes, which are nice clean boxes. Uh, these will be wire wheeled and then they'll be going for um, re -zinking. So again, pull them out. And into the box. You can see the state of that and that. When they come back from zinc, they will look like brand new again. Okay, let's take these plates off. I won't be keeping these screws 
because I don't like them. Um, I always put cap head or Allen bolts in because in stainless steel, I think they look cleaner, they're smoother, and I'm not afraid to break the rules for the uh, for the rivet counters out there. And the other thing with them, of course, you can tighten them up. They're good. <coughs> so those can go in the bin. Just take these. I cut the throttle cables because they won't be getting used again. Obviously, we're fitting new ones. Let's get that out. That out in the rezinking, throw those away. This is interesting, this carb hasn't come up, so give it a crack. This one was okay. So pull that up. We'll go into these, um, how to deal with them. Obviously, when we reassemble, we'll be checking needle heights where the clip is and making sure everything moves freely this uh, diaphragm was okay so that can go in there ah right that's interesting can you see there just there that diaphragm hadn't been sitting correctly. Although it was sealing, you can see it's been trapped. It's been over there. There's a ridge here. The edge of this diaphragm should be in that. So you can clearly see it hasn't. Now this is the one that there was no resistance. Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't. It was the other way around. That's the one that had no resistance. So that's why, incorrect fitting diaphragm. It's not been punctured, so hopefully we'll be able to put that back in. You can see <coughs> that is a correctly fitting diaphragm. It's not kinked at all. So finger in there, just pull it out. And as I say, when we put them all back together again we'll uh, check the needle heights you can actually see in there how dirty it is look at that it's actually it's really bad undo all these I take the end carburetors off first, pull that pipe, which looks like it's shrunk to half its original size. Take the other end one off. It's just the way I prefer to do it. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way. That's got a lot of corrosion on it. So is that. Crikey. That's, that's really tight. But it's just the corrosion. That's better. Pop that out as well.
again all going for zinc so we'll just leave that there for now right from experience don't remove the butterfly first leave that where it is because we need to undo this nut here i one of the first sets of calves um i took to pieces i took the butterfly out first and this was very very tight so as i undid that it actually twisted the shaft um so i've learned do it this way you've got a tab washer just find where the tab is just gently tap it out it's only very thin stainless steel have we got that yeah these are 12 mil Just a very tight one, so this is a perfect example. So just crack it, get that off again. Nice clean box, put all your bits in and break them down. So that's the nut tab washer, and then you've got all the little bits of hardware which are absolutely caked in crap. That should come off there, but it's, there you go. Just filthy. Washer. And then you've got a collar that that spring sits in. That spring sits in there like that. So you need to take all those off. Now we've got, um, that mechanism off and the nut off, we can take the butterfly out. So be very careful with these little screws. And because we crack them off, we know they're all going to come out nicely. There we go. So now we just pull that out. Obviously, um, well, it's not obvious, but I always polish these. I know you can't see them, but I know they're there. So, and it's brass, so they polish up really, really easily. So that's another job for when they're all reassembled. Right, with that butterfly off, the, the shaft will now draw out. Just give it a wobble. Sometimes the seal that's in there comes out on this shaft, but it hasn't. So again, that can go there for now. And then we'll just pop the seal out, because obviously it's going through vapour blasting. The seal as well, like any seal, we want to keep the, the fluid in it, or the, the vapour in this side. So on a seal, I don't know if you can see this, one side is solid, the other side is hollow. So whichever side you want to keep the vacuum in or fluid in, the solid side goes to that side. So as it's sucking, this flange can open up and seal it. So again, take care with those. There's one in either side, so pull them out very carefully. So we can put them back in. Right, the next thing I take off is the choke plate. So take the, the screw out, just have to keep making sure you can see. Take the screw out there. Now I always take this one out first, 
because it then holds it in place whilst you take the chunk choke plunger out. So just unscrew that. Again, it's the easy way of doing things. Why make it hard work for yourself? Okay, so let's remove the jets. Again, check that these are free or clear, which it isn't, so we'll have to pay attention to that. I've ground a screwdriver down for taking this out of here. There you go. Just fits perfectly. But I find it's easier to take this out whilst it's on there. Again, blocked up. Um, right. Remove the float bowl. And if you have any of these, make sure you don't lose them. They'll be going to get re -zinked. So little tab washer very very thin this is the reason that we've left the butterfly in there so we can undo this um, little screwdriver just give it a tap open it up there we go 12 mil spanner Give it a quick flick and it should come off, which it has. These don't need to be ridiculously tight. So again, keep everything for re-zinking. That's stainless steel, that doesn't need re-zinking. All these are different. So if you're unsure, before you take them to pieces, Take pictures with your phone camera. Very easy way for reference. Another washer. Throttle mechanism, or throttle cable mechanism. Spring, all that gets re-zinked. Washers, and again, there's the collar at the bottom, which retains the spring or holds it in place. This has got a blanking grommet on it. So I'll very carefully take that off. Unless it's welded itself on like this. Just give it a quick wobble. Just gotta be careful not to pinch it to uh, put a hole in it because it obviously seals. Right, so now we've got the nut off. Get the correct screwdriver again. Take these screws out, being careful not to lose them. Into your box. I'm just trying to do it so you can see. Got to be very careful with these, they strip so easily. And if in if in its past somebody's been messing with them and they just put them in at the wrong angle, they can be stripped. So screws are out, turn it and then just pull the butterfly out. You've got to get it in exactly the right position for it to come out. Another good thing to do is check that all the butterflies have got the same number because that's the angle on the edge of the butterfly which seals in here obviously again that will be polished before I put it back in because I'm like a magpie I like things that shine 
Now we can just withdraw the shaft carefully. Give it a little bit of a twist as you pull it out. I said it in the other video. Be careful that the seal doesn't pull out. If it has, take it off before it goes for zinking. If not, just a little screwdriver and take it out. Make sure you keep them. See, that one actually dropped out on its own. Remove the rock hard pipe, the overflow pipe. Listen to that. Okay. Tick over screw. Let's remove that. This has got um, a spring on the bottom, so make sure you don't lose that. Again, all this is going for zinking after I've spent a couple of hours on a wire wheel cleaning it all up. If you don't wire wheel the stuff you're taking for zinking, it comes back looking awful. So all in the re box. Take that little bracket off. Again, that's going for zinc. So remove the plastic guide and there's two little tabs, just squeeze them down and it should push out. Right, um, actually let's remove the throttle, uh, the choke body. So take the first screw out. Twelve mil spanner. Just undo it. we go this just pulls off so that's your choke plunger with the spring that's the bit you want to keep because we're going to replace this remove the rest of the screws off the choke body again these are all loose so that possibly wasn't sealing I never heard this bike run so um, it would have probably run really badly. Um, give it a crack. <clears throat> uh, that's going for um, vapor blasting. Remove that, throw it away. Whilst it's rolled over, let's remove the pilot air screw. And there's a screw, uh, a spring, and I've got a nice little screwdriver that you press down, and it uh, goes in nicely. Right, let's remove the float bolt. And again, using JIS screwdrivers, so they all fit nicely. Crack with a rubber handle, and it still don't come out. Bit harder crack, it breaks the seal. Again, you can see inside here, I hope, all the crap. Look at that. 
see if we can get that out. Yes. Just a quick visual check, hold it up to the light, see if you can see through it, and you can't. That goes in the bin. Right, and then just repeat the same process on this dirty dog. But I'm going to show you the float bowls. So I'll be back in a minute. Let's get back to these. I want to show you how I check the floats. Get that out. Put the floats down there. Jet out. They're all coming out and getting replaced. I always replace the internals. The only thing I don't replace is the uh, the float unless it's absolutely knackered and I'm going to show you how to tell if it's got holes in it or not. Again inside here you can see all the rubbish and if you just tap it look how loose it is. Horrible. And that's what's going around. Oh the other thing is when you re replace these they've got a float on the bottom a uh, float a filter started with an f um which will take off and put on the new ones so that's important because it does stop some of the debris going through but i always line my tanks with pour 15 so that will arrest any rust or gunge that's floating around in them um, but it's always good to have those on so again keep them right then let's get the carbs out of the way now then the floats I've rebuilt engines and carbs obviously and I found the floats have been leaking on one I did, all three were leaking. Now because this bike hasn't had fuel in it for a very long time and it's all gone green as you can see from the carbs, first get one, get them all. If, if this was off a running bike and it's playing up, take the floats off and shake them. You'll be able to hear if there's any fuel inside them so you'll know whether they're punctured or not. But again, there's nothing in these. So the way to check them is get yourself a cup or a jug of water now that's not boiling but it's too hot to put your finger in really long nose pliers so you don't burn yourself kiddies and just put it in by putting it in there the hot water will heat the air up inside the float increase the pressure so if there is a leak, it will force a leak, so you know. So let's have a look. That one is perfect. Just give it 10 seconds or so. No bubbles. No, You can't see, but uh, there's no bubbles coming out of that one. So we know when we put it back in that we haven't got any issues. Let's try the second one. This is a bit of a shame actually because I was actually hoping one would be blowing bubbles because I've got a trick to uh, to seal it and it's not technical it's very straightforward very simple let's see if this one leaks <laughs> sadly no no, all three are good. I've got a spare one over here. Let's see what that's like. This was out of an even mankier set of carbs. You can actually see the, the fuel residue where it's just turned to a brown 
gunge. Oh, there you go. That's leaking, that's why it's over there. Can you see the bubbles coming out? So, we need a felt tip pen just to mark exactly where it is leaking. So we know it's on this one, but let's just check where it is again. Okay. So it's there. That's where it's leaking. And you can actually, the video probably won't pick it up, but there is a little bit of missing solder there. Now this trick has worked every time I've tried it before, but because this is an idiot's guide and I'm now filming it, it probably won't work. So that's just a kitchen scour that your missus will use, just scotch bright. Clean all the gunge off it. I know that's roughly where it is because of the mark. So this is the time that being a smoker works. Get yourself a lighter and then you're just going to play the flame on that soldered joint there. Just very quickly. And nine times out of ten that will seal it. But it won't this time, let's see. Okay, we've got the lighter turned up now, so we've got a bit more flames. Let's try again. That's better. And that's got it. Okay, the last job that I always do on carburetors um, is to helicoil these four float bowl attachment threads. Um, they've been on and off all the lives. When you want to tighten it up, um, they just strip. So belt and braces, helicoil them now before it goes for vapor blasting. You can't go wrong, and it takes such a, a short amount of time to do it. So, N4, the drill that comes with them. The only one you've got to be careful of is this one, because it's quite close to this choke mechanism. So, just carefully... That's it. Then the rest of them are just easy. do it that way so it's a bit more control you think wouldn't you okay that's all those drilled the um, tap that comes with the kit, put it in nice and square, Just run through with it, it's all monkey metal as you know, so no real effort required, just take it through as far as you can get it because obviously the tap has got a taper on it, just wind it out. Careful on the last few threads to get it out square. The next one. The last one you can't send through all the way because the choke mechanism blocks it. So you've got to watch where it goes to so it doesn't bottom out. Yeah. 
lovely. Right, four of those. Insert the same way as we did with um, the exhaust threads on the block. Put it in so the tang goes down the slot, holds it like that, and then simply wind it in nice and gently. It's hard to do it that way. There we go. Again, like we did on the block, make sure that the final thread is below the surface face of the carb. That's the first one in. And all the time that it will save, you know, if you've got a, um, a strip thread, it's for, this is, this will take minutes. That's that short thread. Just got to be careful with that one. And that's all four done. All we've got to do now is snap the tangs off. So that goes in there. And then hit it with something a bit heavy. And that's the tangs off. Or one off anyway. Obviously you need to remove the tangs. Because if you don't, the bottom of the bolt you're putting in will um, push against it and it will pull the, pull the thread out so very important and that's that so that one took less than five minutes to do but obviously if i was doing them all in all together in one run then you drill them all first then you tap them all then you telecoil all of them so um i hope that's been of assistance to you If you like these videos and you're enjoying them and learning something from them, please like and subscribe.